For when the jousts were ended yesterday, went Ineol through the town, and every way he found the sack and plunder of our house all scattered through the houses of the town, and gave command that all which once was ours should now be ours again. And yester eve, while ye were talking sweetly with your prince, came one with this, and laid it in my hand for love or fear or seeking favour of us because we have our earldom back again and yester eve i would not tell you of it but kept it for a sweet surprise at morn yea truly is it not a sweet surprise for i myself unwillingly have worn my faded suit as you my child have yours and howsoever patient eniol his ah dear he took me from a goodly house with store of rich apparel sumptuous fare and page and maid and squire and seneschal and pastime both of hawk and hound and all that appertains to noble maintenance yea and he brought me to a goodly house but since our fortune swerved from sun to shade and all through that young traitor cruel need constrained us but a better time has come so clothe yourself in this that better fits our mended fortunes and a prince's bride for though ye won the prize of fairest fair and though i heard him call you fairest fair let never maiden think however fair she is not fairer in new clothes than old and should some great court lady say the prince hath picked a ragged robin from the hedge and like a madman brought her to the court then were ye shamed and worse might shame the prince to whom we are beholden but i know that when my dear child is set forth at her best that neither court nor country though they sought through all the provinces like those of old that lighted on queen esther has her match here ceased the kindly mother out of breath and enid listened brightening as she lay then as the white and glittering star of morn parts from a bank of snow and by and by slips into golden cloud the maiden rose and left her maiden couch and robed herself helped by the mother's careful hand and eye without a mirror in the gorgeous gown who after turned her daughter round and said she never yet had seen her half so fair, and called her like that maiden in the tale whom Gwydion made by glamour out of flowers, and sweeter than the bride of Cassivellaun, Fleur, for whose love the Roman Caesar first invaded Britain. But we beat him back, as this great prince invaded us, and we not beat him back, but welcomed him with joy, and I can scarcely ride with you to court, for old am I, and rough the ways and wild. But Ineol goes, and I full oft shall dream I see my princess as I see her now, clothed with my gift and gay among the gay. And while the women thus rejoiced, Geraint woke where he slept in the high hall, and called for Enid. And when Ineol made report of that good mother making Enid gay, in such apparel as might well beseem his princess, or indeed the stately queen, he answered, Earl, entreat her by my love, albeit I give no reason but my wish, that she ride with me in her faded silk. Ineol with that hard message went. It fell like flaws in summer laying lusty corn, For Enid all abashed she knew not why, Dared not to glance at her good mother's face, But silently, in all obedience, Her mother, silent too, nor helping her, Laid from her limbs the costly broidered gift, And robed them in her ancient suit again, And so descended. Never man rejoiced more than Geraint to greet her thus attired, and glancing all at once as keenly at her as careful Robin's eye the delver's toil, made her cheek burn, and either eyelid fall, but rested with her sweet face satisfied. Then, seeing cloud upon the mother's brow, her by both hands she caught, and sweetly said, O oh, my new mother! Be not wroth or grieved at thy new son for my petition to her. When late I left Carleon, our great 
queen in words whose echo lasts they were so sweet made promise that whatever bride i brought herself would clothe her like the sun in heaven thereafter when i reached this ruined hall beholding one so bright in dark estate i vowed that could i gain her our fair queen no hand but her should make your enid burst sunlike from cloud and likewise thought perhaps that service done so graciously would bind the two together fain i would the two should love each other how can enid find a nobler friend another thought was mine i came among you here so suddenly that though her gentle presence at the lists might well have served for proof that i was loved i doubted whether daughter's tenderness or easy nature might not let itself be moulded by your wishes for her weal or whether some false sense in her own self of my contrasting brightness overbore her fancy dwelling in this dusky hall and such a sense might make her long for court and all its perilous glories and i thought that could i some way prove such force in her linked with such love for me that at a word no reason given her she could cast aside a splendour dear to women new to her and therefore dearer or if not so new yet therefore tenfold dearer by the power of intermitted usage then i felt that i could rest a rock in ebbs and flows fixed on her faith now therefore i do rest a prophet certain of my prophecy that never shadow of mistrust can cross between us grant me pardon for my thoughts and for my strange petition i will make amends hereafter by some gaudy day when your fair child shall wear your costly gift beside your own warm hearth with on her knees who knows another gift of the high god which maybe shall have learnt to lisp you thanks he spoke the mother smiled but half in tears then brought a mantle down and wrapped her in it and clasped and kissed her and they rode away now thrice that morning guinevere had climbed the giant tower from whose high crest they say men saw the goodly hills of somerset and white sails flying on the yellow sea but not to goodly hill or yellow sea looked the fair queen but up the vale of usk by the flat meadow till she saw them come and then descending met them at the gates embraced her with all welcome as a friend and did her honour as the prince's bride and clothed her for her bridles like the sun and all that week was old carlean gay for by the hands of dubric the high saint they twain were wedded with all ceremony and this was on the last year's whitsuntide but enid ever kept the faded silk remembering how first he came on her dressed in that dress and how he loved her in it and all her foolish fears about the dress and all his journey toward her as himself had told her and their coming to the court and now this morning when he said to her put on your worst and meanest dress she found and took it and arrayed herself therein 